Hello everyone, my name is Aflin Sinta Situmorang. I'm an English literature student at University of Sumatra Utara. This time, I will present to you my paper that is a social linguistics analysis on language typology. Without any further ado, let's get into it. We'll begin with an introduction to the topic, which is language typology. Language typology is a field of linguistics that seeks to understand the diversity of languages around the world and classify them based on their structural similarities and differences. The study of language typology has a long and rich history and many prominent linguists develop their own unique theories and insights. This paper specifically explores the theory from three influential figures, which are Johannes Smith, William von Humboldt, and William Alexander Stewart. Before we jump into the discussion, I will explain first the methodology that I use in constructing this paper. This study is descriptive qualitative research that aims to explore the theories and languages uh, typology from the perspective of three prominent figures that I mentioned before, along with the case examples of the classification found in human languages. The data for this study were collected through comprehensive research of relevant literature on language typology. It was conducted using academic databases, uh, including JSTOR, Scholar, Mendeley, and other related resources. Now, let's get into the main part, which is discussion and analysis. The first figure we will discuss is Johannes Smith, who was a German linguist. Smith was known for his comparative approach to the study of languages. Smith introduced the wave model theory, which is a theory of language change. He argued that uh, language, languages change over time in a series of waves and or cycles, with each wave representing a period of linguistic innovation, followed by diversion and eventual adoption uh, by other languages. This process leads to spread on diversification of linguistic features across different language families and region. Smith proposed that wave model could explain the presence of similar linguistic features across unrelated languages, as well as the differences between languages within the same family. Smith developed this model as a way explaining the spread of Indo-European language family across Europe and Asia. On his book, Smith described the earliest wave of Indo-European expansion is when the Proto-Indo-European language split into several dis distinct descendants languages, including Anatolian, Toharian, and Indo-Iranian. These languages then spread across the Eurasian continent in subsequent waves, with new dialects and languages developing as they came into contact with other linguistic groups. Afterwards, during the second wave of Indo-European expansion, the Indo-Iranian branch of the family split into two distinct groups, the Indo-Iranian branch, which spread into South Asia and eventually gave rise to the language like Sanskrit, Hindi, and Bengali and the Iranian branch, which spread into Iranian plateau and give rise to languages like Persian, Kurdish, and Pashto. We proceed to the second figure, Willem van Humboldt, who was also a German linguist. He introduced a classification of language based on their morphological structure. The first type is isolating language. This type of language cannot change a word form. There cannot be any modification within the words. Separate grammatical concepts or functions tend to be conveyed by separate words and not the morphological processes. Vietnamese is an example of isolating language. For, ex for instance, in Vietnamese, the word for I is toy, when the word uh, she is quai, and the word for it is an. To say I eat in Vietnamese is toy an, uh, with the subject toy coming before the verb an. Likewise, she eats is said kwai ai an, uh, with also the subject kwai ai uh, preceding the verb an. The verb does not experience any changes in its form or position to indicate a uh, tense or agreement with the subject. The second language type is inflectional language. In inflectional language, words are inflected for grammatical categories, such as tense or case. This means that the form of word changes to indicate its grammatical role in the sentence. For example, in Latin, an inflectional language, the word girl is puella. To say the girl sees in Latin is puella fidet, with the subject puella coming before the verb fidet. 
However, to say the boy sees the girl in Latin, puer puelam fidet. With the subject puer coming before the object puelam and the verb fidet. Notice that the uh, form of puela changes into puelam to indicate that it is now the object of the sentence. The third type of Humboldt's classification is agglutinating languages. Agglutinating languages exhibit a great deal of affixation. Uh, they may contain different morphemes to determine their meaning, but each of these morphemes remains in every aspect they unchanged before their reunion. In an agglutinative language, stems do not change, affixes do not fuse with other affixes, and affixes do not change form condition by other affixes. Turkish, Japanese, and Korean are the example of this type of language. For instance, in Japanese, the word it is tabe, and the past suffix uh, is ta. To say it in Japanese is tabeta, with the stem tabe coming before the past tense suffix ta. The stem and the suffix remain unchanged after the union. Another example is the word si. To say so in Japanese is mita. Uh, with the stem mi coming uh, coming before the past tense suffix ta. Again, the stem and the suffix persist it in their form uh, after they're uh, united uh, to produce a new meaning. The fourth and the last type is incorporated language. This is a very special type of language. It tends to connect all the words in one. Therefore, the typical sentence of this language just look like one word. Humboldt initiated this type of language to his classification based on the basis of his wide acquaintance with American Indian languages. For example, in Mohawk, an American indigenous language, the verb to it is wahon, and the noun apple is ononkwa. To say to eat an apple, uh, we will say anon, anonkwa wahon, which incorporates the noun anonkwa and into the verb uh, wahon to create a new verb that is to eat an apple. Additionally, Humboldt also argue, argues that every language is in the process of developing. Thus, the most developed languages are in the inflectional languages and the early stage of any language development is isolating type. Moving on to our third figure, which is Willis, William Alexander Stewart, who was an American linguist. Stewart introduced the concept of autonomy and heteronomy to describe uh, the ways in which languages are, can be influenced by external factors. Firstly, let's discuss the autonomous language. Autonomy refers to the extent to which a language is independent or self-contained with, it, with its own internal rules and structures. Therefore, an autonomous language is a language that has evolved in relative isolation from other languages and has not been heavily influenced by any external factors such as contact with other languages, colonization, or cul cultural exchange. Icelandic and uh, Basque are the example of this type of language. For instance, Icelandic is a North Germanic language spoken in Iceland that has been relatively isolated from other languages for centuries. As a result, it has retained many features of Old Norse and has a complex grammar system which rich inflectional morphology. Icelandic also have language planning department that coins Icelandic terms for new ideas rather than adopting so-called uh, loan words from other languages. The other type is heteronomous language. Heteronomy refers to which a language is influenced by external factors. Thus, a heteronomous language is a language that has been heavily influenced by external factors such as contact with other languages, uh, colonization, and cultural exchange. Example of a heteronomous language include English and Creole languages. English has been heavily influenced by other languages throughout its history, particularly by Latin, French, and Germanic language. As a result, it has borrowed many words, grammatical structures, and other features from these languages. Stewart emphasized that all languages exist on a variety of autonomy and heteronomy, with some languages being more autonomous and being more uh, heteronomous. He also notes that the balance between autonomy and heteronomy can shift over time as languages are influenced by social, cultural, and historical factors. 
Stewart recognized that language is not a static or monolithic phenomenon, but rather is a shape by wide range of social, cultural, and historical factors. Thus, he proposed the concept of pluricentrism. Pluricentrism refers to the idea that there can be multiple equally valid standards for a language. Each of these uh, is based on a different region or cultural center. Rather than privileging one dialect over others, pluricentrism recognizes that each dialect can serve a valid standard uh, for that language, uh, depending on the linguistic, uh, social, and cultural context in which it is used. For instance, in English, both British English and American English are recognized as valid standards with different spelling, pronunciation, and usage conventions. In conclusion, language typology plays a crucial role in the study of linguistics by assisting in understanding the diverse nature of human language. This paper has provided an insight into the theories of language typology from the perspective of three prominent features, uh, Jonas Smith, William Van Humboldt, and William Alexander Stewart. The WAVE model proposed by Smith explains the spread and diversification of linguistic features across different language families and regions. Willem von Humboldt classified languages into four types based on their morphological structure, including isolating, agglutinating, inflectional, and incorporated. Stewart, on the other hand, introduced the concept of autonomy and heteronomy, describing how language can be influenced by the external factors. Ultimately, the study of language typology increases our understanding of the structures and evolution of language and its classification based on its characteristic. That's wrap up my presentation on language typology. Here are the references that I used to construct this paper. Hope it is beneficial for you and thank you for watching.